Looking to get in on the cottage market? There's lots of ways to find a cottage without breaking the bank. Here are my top tips for scoring a bargain. Cottages that are closer to large cities are going to be more expensive than cottages that you have to drive about two or so hours away from a big city to get to. Yes, it feels like a pain to think about an extra hour's drive at the end of a long work week. However, it may mean significant savings on your cottage property. A cottage in move-in condition will cost you more than a fixer-upper. But if you're looking at this cottage as a long-term property, as most people are, then you may be prepared to make a few upgrades along the way and live with those deficiencies for a little while. You're only there on the weekends anyway. Plus, becoming a super keen DIYer is a big part of what cottaging is all about. You will pay less for a water access cottage, one in which you have to take a boat to get there, than you will for a road access cottage. But there's one caveat. A cottage on a private island is gonna cost as much as, or maybe even more, than a comparable property on the mainland in the same area. If you're looking to score a deal, try to find a cottage on a shared island. That will keep the cost low. This one is pretty straightforward. Winterized properties are probably gonna cost you more than seasonal properties, which makes sense, because with a winterized property, you're using it all year round. However, you might buy a seasonal property with an aim to winterize it over the long term, therefore building value in the property and also looking at a possible retirement plan. You'll pay less for a backlot property, one that's not directly on the water, than you will for a waterfront property nearby. When you're buying a backlot property, be sure to find one that includes deeded access to the water or is close to a public launch. Lastly, consider alternate arrangements. For example, you may decide to share a cottage with friends or family. This can be a great way to cut your costs in half or even more. However, if you go this route, you must be sure to set up a formal sharing agreement. That agreement should cover everything from who pays the property taxes, who takes care of the septic system, and even little things like who puts the beer in the fridge at the end of the long weekend. Although I'm not quite sure that's a little 